Um, everyone here, we're going to have a second Irish response uh, to the Greenhouse paper from Orla Kelly. Orla is Assistant Professor in Social Policy at the Department of Social Work and Social Justice at UCD. And our research areas include social dimensions of climate change, sustain sustainable human well-being and eco-social policies. Orla. Uh, OK, first of all, thank you very much um, to for inviting me to be here. Um, it's such a great report. Um, so a couple of things, I'm just gonna pick up on uh, a couple of themes that I and in the report and relate them to some of the policy and research agenda that um, I'm involved in here in Ireland and um, that are happening more generally. Um, so firstly, in terms of the tone of the report, and I, I think this is reflective of how things are moving on the whole in terms of um, both national and international policy briefs um, and policy making, and that there's a real urgency, there's a shift in tone to be reflective, to acknowledge the appropriate urgency um, of our current situation. As um, Antonio Gutierrez said, this just this year, delay is death. And that is really where we are now. You know, we, the, the time for delay and incremental change is, is really is really past, as you summarize at the end of your report. Um, the, the other kind of um, tone shift in the report that I, I think is also reflective and we see it in the IPCC report is it's this reappropriation of the notion that we need to ch also change demand side policies so um, there was right partly in response to the kind of appropriation of individual action by fossil fuel interests you know it was all about measuring our individual carbon footprint so that structural change wouldn't be necessary or happen even as a green movement or an environmental movement, there has been kind of a reluctance to take that back for fear of kind of playing into that narrative of, of incremental and individual change. But um, as was mentioned earlier, we see the shift in the latest IPCC report and we see it in reports like this and others that actually individual action collective, um, be it as a person, a community or as a constituent demanding of our policymakers must be coupled with this kind of policy making to, to have an opportunity structure that allows people to make decisions in relation to energy demand or, or others, um, the, the so-called provisioning systems that we need to allow agency in terms of energy use and other things. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second, the kind of three themes of the report governance um, first of all, in terms of addressing vested interests, again, this is something that we're seeing much more, much more um, open and honest um, acknowledgement that where we, we are, where we are, not by accident, but because people who are benefiting from capital accumulation have stalled um, progress, have stalled policy making and have sown seeds of division within our society, thereby limiting the political mandate of those parties that would uh, make progress and make change. Um, so this kind of um, acknowledgement of, of vested interest, I, I really like and, and thought was great. Um, in terms of just a research project that we're doing here in Ireland at the moment, um, colleagues and I at, at Northeastern are looking at um, lobbying in the over the last 10 years by interest groups here and how what narratives they've used to really delay climate action by sowing seeds of um, division and doubt and how those have kind of fed inadvertently or otherwise into Irish media coverage, be it the Farmer's Journal or more mainstream um, coverage. Um, so I'm just kind of getting into these nitty gritty a little bit to kind of give you examples of um, how it is, how we can move forward from a research and policy making agenda to taking these big ideas of degrowth into um, actual actions. Um, the, the second part um, that in terms of narrative uh, or policy um, and this picking up on this movement towards sufficiency. Um, and, and I think I really like side points of this well-being for all is, is true and, and, you know, it's what we need to focus on. But what is that? You know, it's, it's such a huge concept. Um, we do have a lot of work to, to do. And, and I think there's a lot of there is a lot of research happening Um in terms of demand side, what, what it is, the numbers that I was talking about, what it is that is a good life, what is a decent provisioning system, what changes do the government need to do, where's the baseline, you know, we're all familiar with this donut economics 
of this um, safe operating space for humanity? How do we reach a social floor where everybody has an equitable standard of living, but we're also not transgressing these planetary boundaries? And we're starting and a research agenda to get more into the nitty gritty in terms of numbers and policies that facilitate this change. Um, if there's also a redistribution piece. What, how do we redistribute um, energy and carbon throughout the world and within society? But there's a bigger question here too. Um, so I just finished research on a trial, a six month trial of reduced work times of 13 companies in Ireland. Um, results to come, another, another uh, report launched next month. Um, but the, the idea here is, is looking at, you know, how if we, if we frame the environmental question as an individual environmental loss and we allow the narrative to, to be positioned that environmental needs and um, meeting social needs are somehow oppositional as opposed to mutually constitutive, um, that's an issue. And reducing work time is one of those policies that has within this kind of broader post-growth policies and agenda that has the propensity to allow people to have this better standard of living in ways that isn't so ecologically intensive. Now, to, to get to another point of the report, this needs to be part of a unified social and ecological framework. If everybody is taking working four days a week and we're allowing Ryanair to offer flights for 10 euro, you know, we're going to have some problems. So, but it gets to the point that, you know, this needs to be a unified social and ecological. Um, so that's my final point, because I know everybody's probably dying for their break by now. Um, enjoy being the last speaker, but um, is, is to be conscious of our framing. And I think that um, this certainly we need um, overarching changes to how we um, frame narratives and, and, and how people need to understand the urgency and the danger. Like what Sai was saying, you know, we were bombarded with messages about how, you know, the danger to our well-being that COVID was offering. But where is the equal urgency and consistent messaging when it comes to the climate crisis and where we are? So we absolutely need that. But we also need to be to, to kind of put out there that it's there are many double dividend wins out there, be it four day week or something else where we can experience gains in human well-being in ways that are not ecologically intensive. Um, and, and finally, part of that kind of engagement and messaging is just like Sive and, and um, the authors of this report have, have laid out in detail that there's an engagement piece. Um, so we've got, a, we've got a research project in UCD now at the moment with um, students to ask them, we know that their levels of eco-anxiety and grief are, are, are going higher, like all of us. No, I don't think anybody who works in this sphere and, you know, has two eyes in their head can really um, feel okay about our trajectory. But um, in addition to asking them, you know, what it is, how are they feeling? What is the level of anxiety? How concerned are we about climate change? We know we're concerned. Um, but, but it's also this, this kind of notion of, well, what can the university be doing? To how can we reform our provisioning systems, be it in education or policymaking or whatever it is, to allow people to act, to have the agency to act in, you know, less energy demanding ways, this kind of reforming of our social um, institutions in ways that, that, that allow for individual agency to act in our self-interest, um, while also kind of laying out this bigger structural role for policymakers, be it in government or institutions like universities, to, to provide an opportunity system to, to bridge this, um, this gap between um, behavior and, and um, this gap between how people want to act and in, in less eco-intensive eco ways and um, being facilitated to do so. Um, so thank you for the report. It was great. It was really, uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>